Hopping on the electric vehicle bandwagon, Mercedes has brought us a few more letters to add to their alphabet soup of vehicles. We have the EQ lineup, which consists of the EQB, which is a small crossover. We have the EQE, which is a sedan akin to the E-Class. And then we have this, the EQS, which is a sedan akin to the S-Class. This is definitely one of the most luxurious all electric vehicles on the market today. So there's a lot to get to, let's dive into it. And before we dive into ours specifically, let's quickly touch on the different trims offered with the EQS. So you have basically two different models of the EQS. You have the EQS 450 Plus and the EQS 580 Formatic. We're rocking the 450 Plus, which is offered in a premium, exclusive, or pinnacle trims. This is the premium trim. So this is basically what you would get at the bottom of the line of the EQS. All right, so let's talk about the exterior design here real quickly. It's definitely a functional aerodynamic design. It's not as crazy of a design as the S-Class, the E-Class, or other vehicles out there from Mercedes because it's going for that aerodynamics and it does have the lowest coefficient of drag of any production vehicle on the market right now. Ours is painted in polar white with a lot of gloss black accents. You can see that solid grill cover with the large Mercedes logo, surrounded by a lot of small Mercedes logos, lots of attention to detail there. The lower fascia has a pretty aggressive stance to it for an electric vehicle. And those headlights have a ton going on. Super nice LED headlights. Around the side, we have 20 inch five spoke aero wheels with black accents. These are basically like plastic inserts in the rim. But that helps with the aerodynamics. But you can option up to some different rims. We're running 255, 45R20 range optimized summer tires. And moving back a little bit further, you can see this little slit right here. What this is, if the doors are unlocked here, we can pop this open. And this is a filler for the windshield wiper fluid. So you put it in right here and it goes into the reservoir. And the reason you have this is because this hood does not open. There is no front to the vehicle. You cannot pop this unless there's a way for like maintenance departments to pop it. There's no way to pop the hood and get to the internals here. So the only real maintenance that you need to do is adding windshield wiper fluid. And you can do that from the little pop out on the side. Our side mirrors here do have the body color caps. You do get a turn signal indicator and they can fold automatically. And as you may be able to notice, we do have the door handles that slide in flush with the vehicle or pop out whenever you're ready to get in the car. Moving around to the rear of the vehicle, you see that EQS 450 plus badge, the big Mercedes logo, which we'll get back to in just a second. And obviously, even though you have a sculpted nice rear end, there are no exhaust ports because this is an electric vehicle. And of course, obviously you get nice LED tail lights back here. Before we pop that hatch, let's check out the charging port. So the charging port, unlike some other uh, all electric vehicles is not in the front, it is in the back. We do have a rear wheel mounted motor, but as you can see here, we do have the charging port and you've got a little button here to release the charger. A little bit of instructions here on the cap. This does have a permanently excited synchronous 245 kilowatt electric motor with 329 horsepower, 417 foot-pounds of torque with a single speed transmission. 
And again, it is mounted here at the rear wheels. If you go up to the 584 Matic, it has a dual electric motor setup, one in the front, one in the rear. So it does give you that 4 Matic drive, and that will get you a combined 516 horsepower and 631 foot pounds of torque. You do have 107.8 kilowatt hour battery capacity with 350 mile electric range. And it is on the 9.6 kilowatt AC charge system. You can also charge it up to 200 kilowatts at a DC fast charging station that adds 186 miles of range in just 15 minutes. And to charge this vehicle, Mercedes has linked up with charge point and electrify america to give over 6,000 charging points across the u.s and you do have mercedes me as an app to help you find a charger nearby we'll talk all about that as we jump in the car but before we do that let's back up a bit and get a full perspective of the size of this electric sedan all right so size wise this is based on the s class which is Mercedes' largest sedan. It is 207.3 inches long, has a 126.4 inch wheelbase, has a total width of 75.8 inches and a total height of 59.5 inches. And this will be a good time to check out the trunk here. And of course, it's not just a trunk, it is a hatch, which is awesome and gives you a ton of cargo space. And those numbers are 22 cubic feet of cargo space in the trunk. You can fold those back seats down and get up to 63 cubic feet of full cargo volume. But that 22 cubic feet back here is very respectable. All right, guys, and with that, let's uh, close this up, jump inside and check out this incredible interior, starting with the back seats. All right, and as far as amenities go, there's not a ton back here. Again, this is more of the, I still hate saying base model, but it is the base model of the EQS. So there's not a ton here. You can get option screens back here. You have this pull down armrest with a little phone tray here, but you can get an EQS with a whole like tablet built into this. We do have nice fluffy headrests and a ton of room. I'm 6'1", bigger guy. This is the basically the same position as my driving seat, and I have a ton of room. Kids commented all week about having a ton of room back here. Lots of ambient lighting, nice bright LEDs for reading lights. So in true S-Class fashion, this could definitely be uh, a chauffeur car. But again, all the goodies here are up front, so let's move up front and start poking around. And by up front, of course, at first, I mean the passenger seat. Usually in reviews, I don't get into the passenger seat because there's nothing special to do over here. <laughs> in this vehicle, there is. So right in front of me is a full screen. You got the driver's seat over here, and I got a full screen over here. I can log in with my profile. We'll talk more about that in a second. But I can also do a slew of things like watch the navigation system, change the radio, different media, different apps, comfort settings. So I can set the massage seats for me or the driver. I can change the ambient lighting, which is super cool. We'll talk more about this as we get to the driver's seat, but I just wanted to show you guys really quickly that you can do all this stuff from the screen on the passenger seat, but uh, let's jump into the driver's seat. All right, and here we are in the driver's seat. Obviously, tons of great materials in this thing. Black leather seats, these nice cushioned headrest <laughs> pillows, very cool. We have a natural grain yacht brown wood design for our trimming plus this really light brown. Feels almost like Alcantara materials on the doors and the dash. But again, obviously the cool stuff is all of the tech. So let me pick you up and show you around. All right, let's start off by talking about this huge three panel display. The base option here is actually a 12.8 inch OLED multimedia touchscreen display. So much smaller, but this is the all new 
what Mercedes calls the hyper screen. It is three displays merged under a single 56 inch curved glass surface. It's standard on the 850, but is a $7,230 option here on the 450 plus. And it comes with a bunch of tricks, obviously. We'll dive into that a little bit here. I also already told you about the ambient lighting that this has that you can control from the passenger seat or the driver's seat. I consider doing a nighttime review specifically with this vehicle. I didn't end up doing that, but I did take some clips while I was driving it at night, and you can see that uh, it lights up really well. You can have a single color to choose from, which you can choose between a ton of different colors, and then you have the multicolor design, which does look cool. One of the cool things is this effects, where it has operating feedback. And what this is, is essentially as you're driving, the lights will be blue as you're just cruising along. It'll turn white as you're using power, red as you're using a lot of power, and then it'll have blue green streaks coming through it as it's regenerating back some battery power. It's a really cool effect, but I found it a little bit more annoying, especially at night because these lights can get super bright. You also do have an augmented reality uh, navigation system. So as you put in your navigation, it won't just show you the map and the directions. It'll actually pull up the front camera and put arrows on the street showing exactly where you should turn. That's pretty cool. And if you got the 580, you get a huge uh, head-up display with that same augmented system. We don't have that here, but uh, it is a really cool look. Mercedes has also implemented an artificial intelligence system that has a user interface with context sensitive awareness, which will display the right type of functions at the right time for the driver. This is pretty seamless and you won't even know that it's happening for the most part, but it is a cool system. They also have a full system that uh, reads the driver's eyes, which will tell you things like if your steering wheel is set to low, and you can't see enough of the driver information display, it will tell you to put it up a certain amount of notches and it'll show you little green dots up here that, uh, that helps you set that. Also over here on the door handles where you have your window controls, you don't really have to worry about picking the left or right mirror that you wanna adjust. All you do is look at the mirror and start adjusting it. And the car knows which mirror you're looking at and we'll adjust the correct mirror. And that's done by radars back here that are constantly shooting you in the face. Take that for what you will. These seats that we're sitting in are fully adjustable, memorizing seats. You also have rapid heating and cooling seats, which is great because I uh, love those heated seats. And like I said earlier, they are massaging seats as well. Back to the driver information display, you can change it between a lot of different uh, displays here, whatever suits your fancy. If you want the full navigation, a classic look with navigation in the middle or different information in the middle. If you want that sport look, an understated look, and here you can change the color, which is really cool. And as it changes the color here, it will also update the color on the passenger screen, but then the middle screen doesn't really match, which is interesting. I kind of like just the classic here, and depending on what I'm doing, have different displays in the middle. I like keeping the range there, which we'll talk more about as we get driving, or obviously if I'm navigating, having the navigation up there is good. Steering wheel is really nice, leather wrapped, nice and beefy. Got all your controls here in the middle and a gloss black here that will actually catch a lot of fingerprints. You also have paddle shifters here behind the steering wheel. Didn't really touch those throughout the week that I had it, but I assume they simulate a gear shift. Don't really know exactly why you would need that. You really have a ton of information and a ton of things to do here uh, in the main screen. It's a really well done system and has been pretty much overhauled for this EQS. Moving back into the console, we do have some cup holders, wireless charging for your phone. You also have two USB-C ports right here that interfaces with the display. You have Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Moving back a little further is a little uh, command center here that you can change your driving modes. You have different driving modes here. 
including a sport mode, an individual setting, a comfort mode, which is your standard mode, and an eco mode. You have a button here for your cameras, and this gives you a really cool look around the vehicle. Obviously, if you put it into reverse, you'll get that 360 and reverse camera. And as you're pulling into a parking spot, if you get close to a curb, you'll get that uh, top down front view. Next is a quick button for your EQ menu, a button for all your safety features here. So as you can see, we have a lot of different safety features like lane keeping assist, uh, steering assist, a tow away alarm. If you're driving it with snow chains in your ESP system, this is your start stop button also, and then your hazard lights. This right here I thought was like a control dial, but it's actually a fingerprint reader. So, so you can set your profile to your fingerprint and just swipe that when you get in. On, off, mute, and volume control. The interesting part about this, this isn't like a touch sensitive like you might think. So you do have to like push in on this thing to control all these features. Where the steering wheel features are swipe controls. And further back is your armrest opens up from the top. You have two more USB type C ports here and a pretty deep uh, console and really nice materials. So that's a quick look around the interior. I'm sure there's a ton that I missed, a ton more I could have touched on. If you want to know more, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer any questions that I can. But I think it's time to get this thing out on the road and start talking about the drive and more about the electricness and chargingness of this vehicle. Let's get into it. All right, and getting this out on the road, you can see it is a very comfortable drive. And it's got that uh, very quiet, unique to electric vehicle sound. Very whooshing sound. Brakes are really good. When you're going super slow, like trying to get out of a parking spot or something like that, um, it's actually sometimes a little bit difficult to get going because that regenerative braking really wants to stop you. But as you might expect from Mercedes, it is super comfortable to drive, super comfortable uh, seating position, steering wheel position. You don't hear road noise really. And even with no engine note, it is just very quiet in the cabin. You do have the adaptive self-leveling suspension, which is great in here. And again, just as a driver's vehicle, it's super smooth and super comfortable to drive. Is it as quick as other electric vehicles? Well, it depends on what electric vehicle you're talking about. If you're talking about like a Model S Plaid or something like that, no. Zero to 60 can be done in 5.9 seconds, which is quick, but not as quick as other uh, electric vehicles. The dual motor 580 does zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. So much quicker, obviously, with the extra power. But let's quickly do an acceleration test. Just a little bit of a feel of how it is. Cause again, it's still quick and it's immediate because it's electric. So coming up to a bit of a straight here, we'll put it into sport dynamics. We'll come to a complete stop. And one, two, three. Sixty. <laughs> it's, it's quick. It'll push you back in your seat for sure. It is rear wheel drive and a single motor. So you could potentially have some fun with it if you really wanted to push it hard. But the S is the luxury class. And uh, <laughs> this thing you just want to sail in. It's just a, such a nice drive that even driving it sporty almost seems wrong. It's really just nice to uh, intimidate the passengers with the sportiness of it. But of course, once you're in sport mode, you are draining the batteries even more. And if you saw from the rest of my stuff, I don't have a ton of charge to finish this review. <laughs> so we'll put it back into comfort mode. One of my big concerns when first jumping behind the wheel here was, uh, would all these screens be way too distracting? And 
My answer is no, they're actually not as distracting as you might think. Everything's easy to navigate and uh, figure out from the driving position. The passenger screen only turns on when there's actually a passenger there. And even then, it's not too distracting at night. With all the lights and all the screens, it can be a bit daunting, but you can turn the brightness down or completely turn those off if they're too distracting for you. But again, throughout my full week, I didn't find them too distracting, but I am a uh, digital screen kind of guy. So take that for what you will. Now, obviously I have had to charge this thing throughout the week. I did show you some footage of that already when we were talking about the charging. Uh, you do have a quick button here on the screen for navigation to the nearest charging units. It will kind of tell you where they are. And the closest one to me right now is eight miles, uh, 11 miles, eight miles, 12 miles, 14 miles. So there are some decently close, but I still have to do a bit of a trek to get to the closest charger. There's none in my immediate area which obviously the network is constantly growing and will constantly get better. When you do set your waypoint to a charger, it doesn't actually take you to the exact point of the charger. It'll actually leave a marker in the middle of the road next to the parking lot. So you kind of have to figure that out immediately that uh, where the marker is, you're gonna turn into a parking lot and start looking for the charger, which makes sense, it can't, uh, get you into the parking lot and get you directions exactly to the charger. I understand that. Again, I haven't really done that in a Tesla. I know Tesla system is uh, really good for that stuff. Some of these will also tell you the kilowatts that they charge at. This does have the 200 watt uh, fast charging capability, which is great, but most of mine are 56 kilowatts, six kilowatts, 50 kilowatts. Yeah, I don't see anything on my list here over 50 kilowatts. Not all of them will list the kilowatts that they are available at. It will show you that there's two units. Uh, one of two is taken up, things like that, which is good, but those aren't always exactly accurate. If you've seen um, some other reviews on electric cars and things like that. Another issue I had was the first time I went to charge this thing, uh, it took me to a hotel parking lot to charge and I plugged it in and started charging it. And we were gonna walk to go eat something while it was charging. And uh, as soon as we started walking away from the vehicle, one of the kids noticed that it said that parking there is only available to customers of the hotel. Uh, and I was paying for the charge. So I figured eh, they'd let me just stay there and charge the vehicle. Nobody else was using the charger. I went in and asked to double check and they said, no, absolutely not. The chargers are only for people that are paying for a room. So you not only have to pay for a room in the hotel, but you also have to pay to charge your vehicle overnight. Luckily, we moved to another spot that was only a few miles away from where we were, found another place to eat. And this one was actually a free charger for up to two hours. But as you see, we started at about 130 miles to go. We ate for an hour and we got it up to about 150 miles. So again, a fast charger would definitely be better. But if I lived closer to the city, that would be probably easy to, easier to figure out. Mercedes is offering a deal for free charging for the first two years, up to 30 minutes on a fast charger. Not sure exactly how that works out. I'm sure you have to have like the app on your phone or a special card from Mercedes, but uh, it is a perk that they are offering when you buy this car new. You do have a lot of safety systems in here as well, like lane keeping assist, steering assist, things like that. Those work out just as well as any other Mercedes. They are great systems. We put them to the test a bit, jumping up on the highway and driving the thing. And they're probably especially useful in this as it's a very comfortable vehicle to drive. With those heating and massaging seats, you could probably get distracted from what you're doing as a driver. So just keep that in mind and be safe. And again, I can't help to feel like I'm just missing a bunch with this thing. There's so much tech you could dive into, so much performance you can dive into, so many uh, technical numbers 
for charging and for the battery that, that I could dive into if I knew a little bit more about the electric car market in total, which I'm learning guys, I'm learning. So definitely if I missed anything huge, leave it down in the comments. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them. But uh, let's go ahead and find a place to pull back over, maybe start charging this thing. We'll talk about the price, the competition, and we'll start wrapping the video up there. All right, guys, so incredible driving vehicle, as you can tell. Let's talk quickly about the price and a little bit about the competition, and we'll start wrapping this video up. So first off, your base price for the EQS is $102,310. So just over $100,000 for the base. Like I said, we are in basically the base, but we do have a few options, including that over $7,000 uh, infotainment system here. And that's gonna bring the full MSRP for this vehicle with destination charge to just over $115,000, which I think is a great price. And even if you're looking at the 580 for Matic, that thing starts at 120,000. Obviously can be pushed up a lot, but uh, still about at or under 150,000 where you can easily spend that kind of money on a Tesla Model S, which is probably the biggest competitor to this. Although this is much nicer interior, the Tesla is more advanced technologically with its batteries, with its charging network, and with the just infotainment and information that you can get out of its screen. This definitely comes super close but if you're looking for fit and finish and comfort, this will very much surpass the Tesla. Again, I haven't reviewed one, but I have been in them. I have heard other people talking about them. So I definitely have a good sense of more how they are to live with day to day. And this is definitely what you're looking for if you're looking for luxury and fit and finish. But with that, let's jump out and wrap this video up before it really starts raining on us. All right, guys, and despite the wind and the looming weather for the video being a bit of a challenge, I've had an incredible week with the EQS. Obviously, in the area that I'm living, the infrastructure for charging isn't quite there, but it's growing every day. And I would definitely say for the price of this thing versus the price of some of its competition, I do think that the EQS is an amazing deal. Interior and tech in this thing is out of this world. And this is, again, one of the base options that you can get. With that said, I haven't really driven much of the competition anyways, but I would love to. I'd also love to check out that EQE and see how it is because I really like the E-Class sedan. And with that, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you got anything out of this. We do a new review every week. And if you're into cars and car reviews, also go check out txgarage.com where we do written reviews from a lot of different authors. We also do event and news coverage there. But with that, guys, thanks for watching.